Welcome to this tutorial on how to set up Kerberos for BeginSets version 4.x. In this tutorial, I'm going to assume that you have an existing cluster already set up, be it the IBM Open Platform with Apache Hadoop, so that's pure open source, or your own cluster with IBM BeginSites installed, or BeginSites Quick Start Edition, which is actually deployed via Docker. We're going to set up a basic Kerberos server, and then we're going to enable BeginSites for that Kerberos server, and I'll include instructions as well for how to set up Quick Start Edition using Docker. Now first, we're going to set up a standalone server, or maybe you're going to choose to do this on the first node of your cluster, where we set up a KDC, or Key Distribution Center. The requirement here is Red Hat or CentOS 6.x or 7.x. And then we're going to establish what's called a KDC realm. Uh, the realm is simply the domain over which the KDC will operate. Now the realm can be any name that you choose. In my case, I have an existing example where my company is called mycompany.com and this is my first Hadoop cluster. And this KDC will have authority over this domain called hadoop1.mycompany.com. The next thing we'll do is set up a principal. Now a principal is simply a person or a service that my KDC server will recognize and provide authentication services for. In this case, the first principal will be the administrator and that principal will be called admin slash admin. Now note that that's not a user ID and password. Admin slash admin is the full principal name and that principal is recognized under the realm hadoop1.mycompany.com. From there, if I introduce my Big Insights cluster, you'll see actually that the KDC realm will be up and running, my Kerberos services are running, but my Hadoop cluster actually resides outside of that realm. What I need to do then is install the Kerberos client RPMs on the various nodes of the Hadoop cluster. From there, I use Mbari to enable Kerberos, but I'll need to tell it what my KDC server credentials are, and Mbari will take care of configuring those clients to extend the KDC realm over the Hadoop cluster nodes. So let's begin. So here I'm logged into my KDC server, that is node 0000, and I'm logged in as root. I'm going to use the first node of my Hadoop cluster as the KDC server. And so I'm going to install the Kerberos server components here using yum install with the dash y flag. Now I'm going to modify the Kerberos configuration file, which is etsy slash krb5.conf, and we're going to define the realm. It's default to example.com, but I'm going to change it to mycompany.com. And actually I want it to be hadoop1.mycompany.com. And then I'm going to define that the KDC for that realm is going to be my current server. So I change example.com here to hadoop1.mycompany.com and uncomment the next few lines and change the KDC parameter to be my node, which is n000.mycompany.com. This is the host that will run the KDC server. There's also an admin server that you can define that could be separate, but in my case, they're going to be one of the same. So it's again, n000.mycompany.com. Next, I'm going to use the kdb5 util command to create the Kerberos database. I'll specify the dash r flag for my realm, which is hadoop1.mycompany.com. And it's going to ask me for a master key, which you should not forget something that will give you administrative access to the KDC. Once the database is created, you'll see a bunch of files under slash var slash Kerberos slash KRB5 KDC. And you'll see here the principal and KDC files. Now, if you actually list with the dash A option, you'll see that there's actually one hidden file, which is a stash file. That stash file is what allows Kerberos to start up automatically by itself without prompting for a password. Now what we'll do next is define who can administer this KDC. And this is done through a ACL file called kadm5.acl. 
You can see that by default, it has a line where anyone with a slash admin in their principal at the realm example.com can be administrators. We're going to change this to our realm, which is hadoop1.mycompany.com and save. Next, let's create our first principal who will match that criteria to be an administrator. So I use a tool called kadmin local. This is a special form of the kadmin tool and you need to be logged in directly on the KDC. I'm going to create this first principal called admin slash admin at hadoop1.mycompany.com. This principal ID matches the ACL for who can be an administrator. And now my principal is created. From here, I can quit. And now I'm going to start the services using systemctl start krb5kdc.service. And I'm going to start the kadmin service, which is what's going to allow me to administer the Kerberos server from a remote system. I'll also enable it to start by itself on reboot. And I'll do the same for the kadmin.service. Now, if you're on Red Hat 6, you should be using the check config command, chk config. So now that my services are running, I can test that my principal works by using the kinit command to get a ticket. So I'm going to use the full principal name, admin slash admin at hadoop1.mycompany.com. It'll prompt me for the password, which I'll enter here. And you can see that if I type klist, I'll see that I've been granted a ticket. And you can see that it has an expiry timestamp. Now, just as a quick tip, if you have trouble with connecting, you can look at the logs, which are defined under etsy krb 5conf There's a logging section, which shows the various log files that are available for you to inspect. So now we're done. And at this point, we have set up our KDC server, we've set up our realm, and we've set up our first principal who has administrative rights to create additional principles on the KDC node. But of course, our Hadoop cluster is not yet part of that KDC realm. What we need to do is install the Kerberos clients on the nodes. Now I will mention that if you are using the Big Insights Quick Start Edition, which runs in Docker containers, what we're going to have to do is install the Kerberos clients inside the containers because it's the containers that are the Kerberos clients. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna SSH to the hosts and then you're going to run this command docker exec it for interactive iop-m which is a container bash which gives you a bash shell and we'll be logging in to the container if we are to ssh into other nodes from this container we actually will move within the containers themselves so you can ignore this instruction if you're not using docker but if you are using docker you can use ps-a to see the container in this case, IOP-M, that's actually Big Insights. And I'm going to use the docker exec command to log in to the container. And then from here, I'm going to install the Kerberos client libraries. Next, I'm going to repeat the command now for all the other nodes in my cluster. So rather than logging in, I'm just going to prefix my previous command with SSH, the node number, and run the yum command. At this point, we've got the Kerberos clients installed on all the nodes of the Hadoop cluster. But in my case, of course, the KDC is one and the same with the Kerberos client. Now, if using Docker, this is a more accurate picture of what you've just done. We have on a Linux server, our KDC server, which we set up previously, we use Docker to log into the container with bash. 
and on each of these nodes, we've installed the Kerberos clients. Next, whether you are using Docker or not, we're going to use Mbari to extend the Realm to our Hadoop nodes. So let's go to Mbari, which is the IP address of your first node, port 8080. Login is admin, admin by default. And we're going to click on the admin tab, Kerberos. And there'll be a button here for enabling Kerberos. Here we're going to check off that we're going to use an existing KDC, which we had set up. We're going to confirm that our network access is correct and that we've got the administrative credentials that has the ability to create additional principles and that we have the Java cryptography extensions installed by default. Now, if you are using Java 8, the Java cryptography extensions are already included. Here we'll specify the KDC host and the realm name, which is hadoop1.mycompany.com. Remember, this is case sensitive, so it should be all uppercase. We can click test to see the connection's okay. And we're gonna specify the K admin host, which is node0.mycompany.com. That's where the KDC is running. And my admin credential, which is admin slash admin. And then on top of that, we're gonna specify the admin password. And there are some advanced options, which I won't get into, and we'll just click next. Here, the Kerberos clients will get set up. And it's also going to quickly test to make sure that the Kerberos is working appropriately. On this next tab, you can accept the defaults. And if you want, you can download the principles that it's going to create. You hit next. And here it's going to stop all the services and we'll come back when this is done. Here it's going to actually create the principles. For every Hadoop service, it's going to create a principle and corresponding key tab files. A key tab file is basically a password file that only the service ID can read. And so when the service ID needs to request a ticket, instead of prompting for a password, it will use the key tab file to get its ticket. When this is done, you can click next and it will try to start services. Now, if this fails to start up, you can try to click the retry button to see if maybe it works a second time. If it doesn't, just click complete and we can try to start the services manually. So here we'll click Embari Home to get back to our Hadoop services. At the very bottom left, we hit Actions, Start All, Confirm Start, and we'll just let the Hadoop cluster start up. Often this will work. And now we're back and our cluster has been enabled for Kerberos. Thanks for watching.